Now let's go to functions and see what we've learned. So functions first are just like the main function in a way, but you can define your own names, your own functions, and they have arguments or parameters. So in your main, you can just call those functions by having their name and then between the brackets or braces, you can uh, name your arguments. And you have to specify, if you want to do that, first what this function does. Just as you specify for the main function what that does when you program your, your program that needs to be executed at the end. Now we call this thing branching because as soon as main starts uh, or as a program is executed, it will go for the first statement and the next statement and so on. And if one of these statements is a function, then what will happen is that this function will be called and it will therefore branch, it will stop with the main function and start executing, in this case, function 1, all the way until it returns. This return does not have to be at the end, but obviously it often is. But if it's somewhere, it will return after seeing this return statement back to the previous function, which in this case is main. And now the interesting thing about functions is that you can have functions that are invoked within functions, within functions, etc. And they can even um, uh, go in a circle, as we, see, uh, as we will see in a second. So in this case here, you have function 2, which is then branched in 2. Uh, and in function 2, we call a function 3, which is then branched in 2. Once function 3 returns, it goes back to function 2. And once here, function 2 returns, we go back to the main function and so on. So this return statement is extremely important for all of the functions that we're going to use. Now, when we design functions, we need to make sure what we put together. Usually it's a couple of statements that really belong together, that perform one task, one function. Um, usually one and one only, and then it immediately returns. Um, and this is a way to comp uh, to to kind of uh, put things together that belong together uh, so to avoid that you have large functions that uh, first of all take up lots of screen space but also become really complex to read. And this is one way to help our program getting a little bit more structured, to put things into functions. Now when we uh, use a function we first have to declare a function. Um, this means that before the program is somewhere executed, we have to show the compiler, especially, what our function looks like and what should be done in our function. Just like with the variables. When you declare a function, you say that it's of a particular type, for instance, for instance floats, that has a particular name, and you can also initialize it. For functions, you do the same. And what we did uh, just a second ago in the example is we went backwards. So we declared our function completely and then declared our main function. So that when we end up using that function, the main function, we already know exactly what needs to be done in that function. What you could also do is do it the other way around. You could first declare the function and define that function later. I'll quickly do that uh, for the example that we had. So if we declare a function, we basically just say there is a function that we, where we return a bool that has this name is odds, and that is has this particular parameter, namely an integer called number, and everything else we can then specify later. So when we go over here, we basically just have to copy this into here, where we have exactly what we had before. So here we um, define the function is odd. And here we basically describe what our function is like. Here we only know um, what our function does, but we don't know it exactly, we don't know how it's implemented, to where here um, we basically implement a function, not define. And when we save this, this works just as well as what we've seen before. So also here, we can give an integer, and then we know whether it's odd or even. This part over here is often put away into little library files, or called header files, that are usually files that have instead of .cpp, .h. But this is something that we'll see in a second. 
So that's what is uh, written over here, these function declarations, the, the definition of what a function is like, uh, are called function prototypes, because they don't know really, or we don't know at this point, what this function over here does. We really have to look at this here to see the details. Only here we have some kind of a contract where we say this is a function with this name that returns this particular thing and takes this particular thing. And with the description that is attached to it, we know more or less how it works. And this way we can abstract a function and just assume that it works as advertised. The way it's actually implemented, we then see down there. So you can do this or you can do the way that we did it before. So declaration always has just this one liner usually where we have our function name, what it returns, and uh, the one or multiple parameters, or also none sometimes, that it takes. And when you look at the definition of that function, you do all of that, plus within the curly braces, you explicitly state what the function does. And then you also there you have the list of statements that need to be executed. So first you go for statement one, which is this if statement, and then you go for the next, and then the next, and the next, and so on. Now a function always has a return type. So before the function name, you know you always have to say what type uh, this function returns. This can be a bool, as we just saw, or a floating point, or an integer. And if you don't want to return anything, you still have to return void or specify void as the return type. Now void in English means nothing. Um, and this nothing means that nothing is returned in that case. In that case we just type return without anything else. Now a function as we had our in our case also can have multiple return statements. So in this case we had a return statement oops, over here to return false and here to return true. Now, when we have uh, these multiple return statements, sometimes this can be a little bit confusing, especially if you have bigger functions. In that case, it's better to put a return statement completely at the end and use a variable to kind of catch what you need to return. So I'll show that quickly. So in this case, our function still stays the same, but we want to here define a variable, which is not an integer, but a Boolean, Oops, which can be called return, um, let's call it root, just call it root, that's the return value, and in this case we say root equals false, and in this case we say root equals true, Oops. and then we can put our, our one single return um, statement completely at the end, where we say return red. We can also initialize red to make sure that nothing happens. I think, and as I said, this is a good practice. So we initialize it, for instance, false, because it is a Boolean in the end. Um, and normally, you should also um, comment here what you really do. Uh, so we do mode low 2. Um, to test and so on. I would I should uh, do a better description here, but um, for the exercises we should definitely uh, have more comments. Right. So in that case we have not multiple return values, but only one uh, multiple return statements, only one and only at the end. And we catch this by having a local variable inside this function called red, St starting as false. And that we then put as false if the number is even, otherwise we put it as true if the number is odd. And that we return that at the end of our function. So that will be exactly the same. So also that we can quickly test still. Um, so let's compile it first into our executable tests as before. And now we execute it. And if we give an even number, it's even. If we give an odd number, it's odd. Right, so that's how this is normally happening. And this is also what is written here. So we basically have uh, formal parameters. This is the one thing that I wanted to show first. Um, so the formal parameters are the ones that are in the definition. 
So in this case here we say that we expect here an integer and we call that a for the remainder in the implementation of the function. And here we have an integer that we call b. That's exactly what we did here with num. So this num over here is a formal parameter that we can use in the definition of our function. Now once we use our function, such as for instance here the function maximum between 42 and 44, then those 42 and 44, the actual parameters, those are the values that are then assigned to a and b and that are then being put into the, into the function. And just as a remark, um, as I already probably have done multiple times, I use parameter and argument interchangeably. So they're kind of the same. So it's basically what you supply to a function. Right. So what I wanted to say earlier is that local variables are only local. They're only defined within the body of the function. So in this case, this local the variable red can only be used at a after it's been defined, right after here, but only between this curly brace and this curly brace over here. So we used it here, here, and here, but once this function returns, red is completely deleted from our environment. We don't know this particular variable anymore. That's why it's called a local variable. So if we would afterwards, after, for instance, this odd, um, uh, using the is odd function right over here, we could not use this red variable because it's unknown. It is only local to this particular function. And in C++, these rules apply to any compound statements. We could do everything with global variables. In that case, global variables means that we could make a variable that we define right over here at the top. So we could have set bool red over here. This would have worked but this would have made our code really messy because this return value or this return variable that we wanted to use is only valid right here in our function, is odd. So right down here. And the fact that we only need it here means that we declare it here, that we initialize it here, but that we only use it there as well. So as soon as the function returns, this red is dissolved and this doesn't exist anymore. So that's why global variables usually shall be used, because every variable is valid within a certain function. Right. So passing a function uh, or passing a parameter by value means that you're not the, uh, using the exact variable and using that within your function. No, you basically copy its value and only use the value of that variable and not the variable itself. That means that a function, when it's done, always receives copies of uh, parameters or of variables. Um, and that is a little bit tricky to get used to. So let's see an example um, where this is being illustrated. So we have here, in this case, our function f with two parameters, um, b and a in this case, where a is assigned to a, a mixture of both b and a, and that is being returned right over here. And somewhere, for instance, in our main function, but this could also be another function, we have um, two variables, x and a, that are assigned to value, and those we use as parameters in our function. So this to give an, uh, a little bit of an example of what could happen. Now, we use here this activation record to show what is really happening in the background when you call this particular function, this one over here, for instance. So in this case, um, we have our x assigned to 10 and our a variable assigned to 12. Both of them are integers, so if we, we know that inside uh, our computer's memory, four bytes are reserved to represent that 10 and represent that 12 as an integer, which we then call a or x respectively. Then we go into the function, and then for that function, we have a completely new activation record where for the function, we need two new variables, namely one called b, and one called a. So we reserve some space in memory for those two. And we also know that we need to return a value. So that also that will be reserved in our activation records. Now, we see there that we have a, so in that case we have our integer a with a value 12 that is being put into the first argument of function f. That means into what was b or what should be b. So b now becomes the value 12. 
Now it's important here that this b and this a are completely different variables that exist elsewhere. And this b now has a value 12, and that's it. The next part, we have this increment of x. This we do before we pass x because the increment is a, there a prefix, not a postfix. And we therefore have x value 10. We increment this to 11. <clears throat> and this 11 is now our x right over here, which is passed as a second parameter of our function f, which is our variable a within the f function. Now note here that this variable a is completely different from this variable a over here. And that within this function, this a and x over here are completely unknown. This function only knows b and a as they are defined right over here. And it doesn't know this particular a or this particular x at all. So now we invoke our function. So that means we go into our function over here. So this we gray out and we execute the first statement in our function. So we take what was uh, b and a, and we assign a to this new value of 2 times b plus uh, a squared. So now a gets this particular new value, and we also see here that this particular value a that happened to be in this other function, for instance the main function, is still 12, as before. So only the value was being copied onto b over here. That's why we call it copy by value. Now when we add this and return, we return a plus 1, so we return 145 plus 1 is 146. And this is being returned in this particular case. And this we can also do for the second uh, part where this function, the exactly same function is used. So also there, if we start with a function, call it with the two parameters a and a plus 3, um, we put a, uh, which is 12, as the first parameter, which is b over here in the function. And we put a plus 3, which is 12 plus 3 equals 15, into the second parameter, which is a uh, for the function. And that way we can uh, execute that function. So we go into the function, execute uh, this particular statement over here, this assignment and then return a plus 1. So we return 250, and in that case, 146 and 250 are returned from uh, both times that the function was used, and then uh, the, con the, the function continues. Okay. So this means that when we uh, give a parameter to a function, then only its value is being copied. Now this may lead to some problems. And this is a very typical one. You might think if I make this particular function, which is a, a function called swap, takes two integers and returns void, so it doesn't return anything. Um, and I um, assign first a local variable temp to x, then x I assign to y, and then temp I assign back to y, uh, to y again. Uh, so a y is assigned to x and then temp is assigned to y then I would have swapped the values of x and y. Now, up until the end of this function, this is indeed true. But since x and y are variables that then suddenly disappear when you exit the function, um, and since it doesn't return anything, after swapping, x and y will have exactly the same uh, value as before the swapping. So that is the problem here. Even though the names x and y here are exactly the same as the names x and y here, those are totally different values, and just they're uh, totally different variables. And those are uh, having values that are being copied whenever you invoke this function over here. Um, but when you leave the function, whatever value these two had is kind of gone, along with the variables. So this is uh, something that you can try in your terminal, um, and later we will see something to fix this. But for now, this is something that you can do with functions. You can't give it a variable and assume that that variable's value will be changed within the function. And as you exit the function, these values will stay changed. In essence, the arguments or the parameters of a function uh, will just get lost after the function exits.